Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video serves as an update to the fastest contract DLC video where I show the best fully upgraded contract DLC cars in terms of lap time. For all the information you need about this series, check the original contract DLC video, but otherwise, let's see where the new iWagon falls into that list. And it's it's alright, it actually drives really nicely, it's really smooth, especially over the bumps. It is the 11th best of the contract DLC vehicles of the 13 cars I've tested so far, so it's not that great for the contract DLC. But in terms of the SUVs class, it falls into 8th place overall, which is obviously significantly better than it managed to do for top speed. With a 1 minute 10.7, it's... It's an okay lap time, you know, it's not too bad. It's quicker than sort of the old guard of SUVs that we used to race with back in the day. But it's just, it's not a great lap time, you know, it's just really pretty average. And for such an expensive SUV and the first electric SUV as well, they really could have done so much more with this. As we saw from the top speed testing video, it does have the worst top speed of any SUV. So it's the acceleration and grip that it gets that gets it this lap time. Obviously electric cars are known for having bad top speed, but decent acceleration. And it, like I said, it drives quite nicely, the, uh, the iWagon. So it's a fairly decent driving experience. It's just not that quick. And when you put it up against the Tauros, obviously it's so far behind and to be so much more expensive as well. To be honest, I would have liked to have seen it have more power. That's really all it needed. M more so than what the engine upgrade would have given it if it actually had it. I'll talk about that in a minute. But I would like to see it have more power such that its lap time was similar to the Tauros at the top of the class. But obviously with a naturally lower, worse top speed. Not as bad as it is now, but obviously electric cars generally do have lower top speed. So we would have had the Tauros and the iWagon at the top of the class, both getting the same sort of lap time, but the iWagon gets all its lap time from acceleration, the Tauros gets it all from top end, and it would have been nice to have that variety at the top. It's still a one, one vehicle class SUVs because the Tauros is so quick. It's just a bit of a missed opportunity and crazy money for a car that's like this. It's really strange that they didn't include the engine upgrade for this car as well. Like, it does exist in the handling files. You just don't have access to it in Los Santos Customs to apply it. It's really strange. It wouldn't have made it realise that potential of being on the Tauros pace, but it might have at least put it into that second A tier with the Astra, Novak, Rebler, things like that. And it wouldn't have had such a terrible top speed if it got access to that. So just to clarify, the only performance upgrades for the iWagon are brakes, spoiler, and max suspension for slightly better grip, like all cars from the Tuna DLC onwards. And the iWagon doesn't even have that great of you know, um, visual modifications as well. It's it's crazy that it's kind of this price for something so meh. So yeah, bit of a disappointment from the iWagon, and, but you know, it is what it is. I've given you all the information you need so you can make your own decision on whether you want to get it or not. That's pretty much it for this one. Consider supporting on Patreon. I'll become a YouTube member if you want testing results early. And remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed it, found it helpful, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.